All right, we're back. And we back, can we back? <laughs> uh. So exciting. Wave. I love to, yeah, let's do this. Like I just type out wave, because that helps. All right, let's see if we can make this happen. There's been a little confusion, and that is my fault completely. Ladies and gentlemen, on hold the phone. Let's see if we got it. Let's see if it's happening. Pastor Joe! Hey, Judah! How are you? I'm doing so good. It's so good to see you. I'm sorry for the confusion, Pastor. That's all right. This is my first time, so I don't know what I'm doing. Yes, we we got Bishop Jakes about a week ago to do his first as well. Man, you're you're teaching us, man. I don't know. I would just said, tell me what to do. I'm sitting there looking at all these people. But how you doing? I'm doing so good. Our family is healthy and well. How's your family? Everybody's good. We're just crazy time, isn't it? But everybody's good. We're just uh, I don't know, Judah. I'm kind of I'm kind of in a in a different way i'm kind of embracing where we are you know i've never had the weekends off you know yeah but um you know i don't know i, I hate that people are sick but um i yes, just think sir. it's a time god's having to slow down so we're all doing good oh i love hearing that and you know how much i love your kids they're an inspiration to me i've got a special place in my heart for pastors kids and your kids are top shelf they love jesus they love their mom and dad they love the world it's incredible yeah, they're great kids. I'm proud of them. Just couldn't be more proud. Feel blessed to have them. Who are they most like, you or your wife? Well, different <laughs> different ways. Let's see, Alexander, our daughter's like me in the sense of I'm I'm real organized and all. But Jonathan, you know, they're they're both. They're like both of us. They they get the good. I hope in both of us and leave the bad. <laughs> Jonathan's more like me. He's a free spirit. He's an artist. He's a free spirit and creative. And I think, where do you get all that? Because I don't have any of that. But yeah, he, he loves you, you know, and loves oh, spending that time with you him. and all of our kids. Everybody loves you, Judah. Everybody loves you. <laughs> Look <who's> talking. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to keep you long. We'll do like 30 minutes or less. But I got some questions I have always wanted to ask you. You got it. Okay. Why and how are you so happy and filled with joy. I know everyone calls you the smiling preacher, yeah. but you are not the smiling pe preacher. You're the smiling person. You're <laughs> always happy, full of joy. What's the key? What's the secret? You know, I don't know, Judah. I think some of it is God gave you, you know, your personality. I was always in my baby pictures. I'm smiling, you know, my smallest baby pictures. But <laughs> I think a lot of it is just, you know, you just, I just, to me, I've just seen the positive in life to see that making the choice to see the good. Cause I, I think there's good and bad in almost every situation. And I think it's what we choose yeah. to see. And, you know, and it's, I think a lot of times we choose to say, well, I got this problem and I got this thing happening over here. But then again, you know, maybe I may, I may making this up, but maybe 95% is great in our life, but we can look at the 5%. So I've just learned to say, man, you know what? Life is too short. Let's live it happy. Let's live it joyful and, and really not wait for everything to be perfect. But that's, that's my philosophy, just making that choice. Well, and one of the things I admire about you most, Pastor Joel, is that you are not uh, attempting to live what you preach, but you're already living it. And then it just comes out of your life. And I know that from just personal experience in terms of watching you and our family knew of the Osteens for so long, and my dad so admired your dad. Your dad taught him so much and, and poured into him, but um, this is who you are. Like, this is absolutely who you are. And by now, of course, the whole world knows this is who you are, um, but I want to thank you for that. It's so inspiring when I see you preaching and teaching, and boy, there's been some late nights like everybody else on this call, everybody else watching where Pastor Joel Osteen has said to me personally, late at night on television, exactly what I needed to hear. So thank you for being so consistent. It inspires the next generation, that's for sure. Uh, thanks, Judah. You're always so kind, but we love you. And I got to know your dad. I mean, I got to meet your dad. I didn't know him well, but he came to one of our minister's conference there at the church. And uh, I didn't really, you know, I didn't know you at the time that well. Of course, this way back, probably before you were so famous like you are now, but... Um, <laughs> But I just remember your dad was a giver, 
I just, that's what stuck out of me. He was always giving and he was so kind, but you're like me, Judy, you come from a great, you know, a great heritage. And I look up in that, I think the same thing. I mean, you know, this Mother's Day in a couple of weeks, Lakewood's 61 years old. And I think, wow, you know, and I'm getting to, I'm getting to reap benefits of somebody that spent 40 years there before me. And it's just, a, it's a powerful thing when you realize that, uh, you know, we didn't get here by ourselves. And I know somebody, you know, maybe listening say, I don't have that heritage, but you can start something. You can start something great now. But uh, I, I feel, I don't know, I feel blessed to just, um, you know, where God's put us. And I don't think any of us are here by accident. And even this time with the crazy virus going on, it's just, uh, just believe it's, um, it's not just a physical thing. I believe it's a spiritual thing. I believe God's doing new things and maybe he's slowing us all down and maybe he's drawing his, our attention toward him. And that's the way I, that's the way I've, I've tried to say earlier, just to kind of embrace where we are and say, God, you know, maybe there's some things I need to realign or readjust and not, not mean anybody's a bad person, but you just, right. hey, it's a great time to say, you know, I'm gonna take more time for my family and what can I do better? And how can I not go back to the old, maybe old habits and stuff, but now I'm preaching, Jude. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> no, I love this. This is why we're doing it. Can oh, I ask thank another you. question? What, yeah. Uh, I've, I've noticed in your, in your life, not just your ministry, of course, your ministry is an overflow of your life. You just did it on this interview. You said, you know, there are a lot of people who don't have that legacy, but they can start it. How do you, I see you do that constantly. People are, you, you have an empathy and an awareness for people outside of maybe your journey or your story. How do you stay cognizant of people who don't have your story, your heritage, your experience? Um, because your sermons preach to obviously the world, millions and millions of people identify with what you're saying. And yet you're a pastor's kids like me. So how do you relate yeah. to people going through so many different challenges and struggles in life? You know, I just, a couple of things, Judah, that I think about is, is every service when we're having people come, I talk with people afterwards, you know, I meet, you know, hundreds of people, they're visitors, but it helps me. I spend about an hour after each service, but it helps me to know what people are going through. I hear their victories. I hear great things that have happened. And I hear people that are saying, you know what, life's thrown me a curve and I'm here at the medical center and going through a divorce. So I don't know, Judah, when I, when I first started ministering, I was, I am a preacher's kid like you, but I thought I kind of want to reach people that weren't raised like me. And one thing I, I, you may, I may have told you this before, but I used to play basketball at the YMCA all the time. And I played there for 10 years, way before I was a pastor. And I think a lot of guys knew that I was a preacher's kid. They probably, they knew that, but I'm, I'm not the most outspoken guy in the world. I'm more quiet. But when I, when I took over my dad and I started ministering, I thought these guys that watch that that I play basketball with, they're gonna they're gonna be flipping through the channel in the next month or two, and they're gonna see me, and they're gonna say, "There's the guy we play basketball with," and I thought, Judah, I want to talk to them in a language they can understand. I don't want to just talk in a, you know, a, a, a doctrine or a Christian ease, but I just want to I want to be able to relate to them. So when I write my messages, I try to write like I'm writing to my friends at the basketball, at the, playing basketball with, and they weren't raised in church like me, so maybe I was explain something or maybe I'll talk in just everyday terms. I mean, listen, you're, you're brilliant at it too, but I think it was that mindset of, okay, I've got all the, I've got all the dad people that love my dad. They're going to follow me and all that, but how do we reach beyond this? And some of it is, you know, it's just not talking in a Christian ease. And I think some of it too, Judah is, and you do this is everybody needs to learn how to forgive. Everybody needs to learn how to have a good self image. Everybody needs to learn how to get along with people. And so I felt like my calling was to take these principles in the Bible that relate to anybody. You don't have to be a believer yet. People watching from other, you know, other faiths and that's all fine, but I don't know. I'm going long on my answer, but I think the, the, the philosophy was, is how do we reach people that are not like me? Yeah. And how do you stay, if, if you're not playing at that same YMCA, yeah. how do you stay so connected to uh, the everyday man and, 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 and woman, which I know so much of you, that that's who you are, but how do you stay connected to that narrative? Do you, do you just keep going back to stories on that basketball court? How do you keep doing that? Yeah, I think that, and I think also just thinking about the people that I meet, the everyday people that I talk to, the people and the visitors, and just, uh, you know, we take that time in our services where we pray for people. So I'll pray for a half a dozen people every service, and 
you know, again, I just, um, I just try to deal with people where they are in life. And I think there's, there's need to, to hear doctrine and why we believe what we believe. And that's all important. And we teach that in classes. But yes, when do. I'm talking, I think, you know what, I want to talk to you about, you know what, how you can get through this week or how you can reach your dreams or just, uh, just I, I found, Judah, that every, all of us, rich, poor, black or white, you know, we, we, we have relationship issues, we have financial issues, or we have health issues. Almost anywhere in the world, you know, and, and when you come back and you talk about these everyday life issues, I think that's why so many people, and I know they say it to you, it's like, oh, you were talking to me. Well, I'm just talking about overcoming, and I'm talking about having a good attitude, and talking about knowing that God is for you. And I think that's where people live, you know. You know, we all face challenges. All of us. I'm reminded of that uh... It's probably my life verse, but Paul says to, to, to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, 1, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Your, your specific gift mix, your wiring, who you call to. How, how would you, Pastor Joel, say, you know, your grace? What are you gifted and graced to do by God for this planet and while you're here? Is that yeah, a fair talk, question? Yeah, yeah. Let me make sure I understand talking about me or to somebody else. What did I say to somebody else or to me? Yeah, you. What do you, what do you think your, your, yeah. your specific calling is, if that makes sense? Yeah, I do, Judah. I, felt, I feel like I know it now more than ever, and that's to spread a wide net of hope to people all over the world. And it, it's helped me, Judah, to know what it is. And I don't think that I always knew it, but it's helped me because, you know what, people are always trying to squeeze you into who they want you to be. And, you know, I've got a lot of pressure over here. Joel, you need to be like this. and You need to help me on this cause. And a lot of it could be good, but you've got to go down deep to know what's in you. And I feel like that's what I'm gifted at. And, and Judah, some of it, I didn't even try. I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't after it. I didn't know when I took over from my dad, I didn't know people would be, you know, people would listen to me. And I didn't know, you know, people would, you know, start tuning in. And so somehow realize right. that, God, you're giving, you're giving me this connection. I don't know what it is. It's just some of its personality and, and the gifting that God's given me. But I've, I've been good at this, Judah, not to brag on me, but I think it maybe helps somebody else is to, you know, find what that is on the inside. I don't know that we know it instantly, but when you do, then just go with it full force. Because I get hit from this side, I get hit from that side, and I got critics here, and I got people pushing me here, but none of that bothers me. When I can get up every morning and say, God, I believe to the best of my ability I'm doing what you want me to do, then you know what? I can tune out all that other, and I'm just going to keep throwing that wide net of hope. You know, the other thing, Judah, and you stop me <laughs> when I'm talking too long. But, no, I love you know, it. You know, people don't determine your destiny. People can't stop you. And I think when we realize this, it's so important because – you know, I probably have more critics than any preacher in the world, maybe. It feels like it. But you know what? None of that has stopped me. And the more people I've talked, the higher God's taken me. So I think it's just, man, you got to set your focus and, and do what God's called you to do and tune out all the chatter because anybody doing anything great is going to have chatter. And so I've been good at that and just to... You know, I spent those 17 years behind the scenes working for my dad, and, and I believe that's what I was supposed to be doing at that time. But when I stepped up into this other, you know, in this last, I've been doing it 20 years now. Now, you know, I just, it's, it's strong on the inside of me that this is what I was born for. It's a, and I thank you for saying that, Pastor Joel. It's so powerful and clear. And, you know, there's not a single preacher that's ever lived or will live that is the whole gospel. Uh, we all need yeah. each other. And only Jesus yeah. preached the whole gospel. The rest of us yeah. are doing the best we can by the grace of God and, and, and trying to be who God's called us to be. And I've, I've loved your faithfulness and consistency, spreading a wide net of hope. And I just want to say, coming from my friends, mm -hmm. I have had several personal friends hear about Jesus first because of you, because of the television show, and they have come to me personally, and I've been able to now walk with them in their relationship with Jesus. And it was that wide net of hope that opened yeah. up their soul to the story of Jesus and how he can change everything. So thank you for being strong in that. Hey, thanks, Judo. I appreciate it. Again, I believe that's, I love what you said because we all need each other. And I think, guys, I'm not the only way. I'm, I'm an encourager. I've got that gift. Judy, you got an incredible gift. you got somebody over here teaching prophecy, somebody over here teaching discipleship. And just, you know what? We all work together. And I think that's why sometimes people think, well, Joy, you don't do this or that or the other. Well, you can't do it all. <laughs> you know, you got to stay what you're good at. And we're all functioning together.
That's so good. I had a I had a preacher one time. He said, "You don't do the uh, you don't do the salvation prayer at the end, preacher. You know, people can't get saved without the salvation prayer." And I thought, boy, that's so funny. I mean, Billy Billy Sunday came up with with what we now is the norm for church. You know, you raise your hand, and of course, Pastor Joel, you and I growing up, we every single person that wanted to get saved had to come stand down in front with my dad. You know, they I had know. to make a yeah. public declaration. I know. <laughs> I know it's funny, and and some of those are started by man. You know, it's it's it is funny though. But uh, you know what? All doing it our way and, uh, totally. and God's way, but the way He's given us, and just you know, yeah. you're reaching people, Judah. That I was talking to you the other day, just privately. I'm not just saying this to say this because I told you it privately. But you're reaching such influencers, and you're reaching such people that are that are making a difference, and you have that gift. I don't know if they're going to turn on the TV preacher that's giving them this motivation. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But, you know, it's just the different styles and the giftings. And I think that's when we, when we embrace who we are. Like, I don't, I don't know. I think it's an, another important thing is, you know, not be intimidated by people, but be inspired by them. I'm inspired wow. by who you reach. I'm inspired by your gifts. I'm inspired by people that are far, far ahead of me. But you know what? God, God giving them favor doesn't stop God giving us favor. So you know what? I, you're not going to intimidate me being further along. You're going to inspire me to say, God, you did it for them. You can do it for me. Celebrating each other. Oh, I love that. Make Allowing people to inspire you rather than compete yeah. with them. Yeah. I hope if, if, if we don't get nothing else from this call, that is so, yeah. the comparison game is so profound right now because we're all on social media at the same time looking at each other. No. Going, oh man, he's so perfect and she's so perfect, but nobody is and we're all doing the best we can. I know, and it's so strong today to be just, oh, man, it's just, there's, I don't know if it's it's envy or just wanting to, but you know what, man, just, just celebrate because, you know what, God's given us all different gifts. And man, you know what, if you, you, you're you never going to, I, I don't think you'll, you'll become who you're created to be if you can't celebrate somebody ahead of you, because these two are tests that we have to pass of, a, you know, can you handle the influence God wants to give you, and so... I just think it's important. You know, somebody's more attractive. Somebody's more talented. Somebody's more successful. Man, alive, celebrate them. God, you did it for them. Do something great in my life too, God. That's so, I just went on a walk with Charles. We just did about 45 minutes just around the neighborhood doing our best with social distancing and masks, but just having <laughs> yes. our daily walk and talk. And I told her, I, I confessed to Charles. I was like, hey, yesterday, you know, one of my dear friends, Stephen Furtick, I just, he happened to be on my Instagram feed and I went on there and all of a sudden here it happened. I looked at all of his views and he had 700,000, 800,000 views. And I said, babe, I said, that kind of affected me last night. I was realizing like, wow, Stephen's just got so many more people watching his sermons. And here's one of my dearest friends. I love yeah. Stephen Furtick and Elevation yeah. Church. And I just had to say it to my wife. We had to pray about it for a second and just let it go. So we're, yeah. like, we're it doesn't matter who you are. We're all in this together. We're going to have those days where we go, man, that person's so much better. It must make me smaller. But that's not the way it works, is it? No, it really isn't. You just got to run your race and just uh, be who God's made us to be because there's always going to be somebody. We look at that and then there's someone <laughs> calling out for me and you think, God, I just might as well go ahead and drop out, you know. But no, I think everybody, you know, be who God made you to be and be, yes, be content. And I think being content not doesn't mean you have to be satisfied. But you know what? I'm content with God's given me now. Because, you know, otherwise, Judah, we're always, even in church, well, when my church grows bigger, i got to get bigger. I can't, you know, or, or in life, you know, when I get that new house or when I get this promotion or when I'm married, when I find that right person. But, you know, I think it's very powerful to say, God, I do have dreams and goals, but God, I'm content where I am. I'm not, I'm not fighting every minute. And I, I think sometimes, Ju uh, Judah, I've, I used to live like that. Not it's a little bit, just, you know, you, everything, you know, it's easy to live every, fighting everything. I'm, mean, you know, fighting these critics and I'm fighting the enemy and I'm fighting to grow my church. But man, I've learned, you know, God, I'm going to embrace where I am. I'm going to live from yes. a place of peace. God, I'm going to let you promote me. I'm going to let you open the doors. And it's just, you know, it takes the pressure off. Otherwise, everything's a fight and we fight in the name of God. I'm fighting to reach my dreams and I'm fighting to, but I just learned this. Life goes a lot better when you can say like, Paul, you know what? I'm content where I am, believing to go further, but God, I'm going to be happy where I am. So good. And I read for those who want a little passage in scripture that'll speak to you about comparison. First Corinthians three in the Passion Translation speaks so much of this and it has just been life to be today. Pastor Joel, I only got you for about five more minutes, but I've got to ask, when is the last time Pastor Joel Osteen was mad and why? <laughs> when was I mad? Um, 
Oh man, Judah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I don't. I have a. I probably sound like a weird personality, but I don't really get that mad. I, I think. Um, you know, there were some little things. Maybe that day we had some technical problems we need to fix, and I thought it wasn't. We weren't up to par, but I don't think I got mad. But, you know. I don't know. I should tell you this. My mother said she's never seen me mad a day in my life. I just don't have that kind of personality. <laughs> no. I sound like a saint, but I'm not. I just, you know what? I'm not a, I'm not a, I don't like confrontation. And I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a good answer. And I'm not a perfect person. Well, I just, I don't get mad. In case you're wondering, I slammed my paddle on the ping pong table last night so loud. My friend Elijah <laughs> Waters was like, what is wrong with you? What are you doing? <laughs> And I think I well, you need to get saved, up. Judah. <laughs> I'm a work in progress, Pastor. <laughs> I, I know. I got plenty of my other issues. Anger's not one of them, but I got plenty of other ones. But okay, we don't have time for all question. those. What okay. is um, the most ideal date night with you and your lovely wife? Oh, man. You know, it's it's funny now, Judah. It's it's to to be able to hang out at home, to order something in, hang out at home, if we're in town, hang out at home, eat something there, maybe go for a bike ride or go for a walk or something, something simple like that. I love Used to that. be go out and do big things, but I, we like the simple things now to be at our house and enjoy it, not have anything to do maybe. And so uh, we really enjoy doing that. Just hanging with family and hanging with her. Do you like the ocean or do you like mountains to relax? I like both. I like both. I like, we usually go to Colorado. I need to go to Colorado once a year because it clears my mind. I get up, oh, a, I like man. to go during the summer. I go, up in the, I go up in the ski lifts and ride my bike down or go hike. But I just like that expanse because I live in the city. So I live two miles from the church. So I, I, I go out my door and I hear freeway. You know, I'm, I'm right, two miles right. off the freeway. And so to go out there and get quiet is just amazing to me. So I, I like that. But I like, the, I, like the, I like the ocean too. Do, I'm spoiled. Do you, have a, do, you, do you have a favorite verse in the whole Bible? Well, I have one of my favorite. I don't know if it's my only favorite, but it's a lot of people's favorites. That Philippians four thirteen, and I, I think just because we all need it, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you know, Judah, you know my story, kind of a little bit like yours. But you know, when my dad died, every every voice said that, that I couldn't do it. And that I've that I wasn't that I hadn't been to seminary. That Joe, you don't have the personality. Nobody's going to listen to you. And I'd worked behind the scenes all those years, but I had to just play those scriptures. That was one of them all the time. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Those those that inner dialogue. If you don't get it going right, you can you can defeat yourself. You can. I wouldn't be here today if I didn't get my inner dialogue going right. And, not just not with what people say, not just something positive, but what God says about you. I can do all things through Christ. I tell myself, Jen, Judah, that, you know, what I've been raised up for su such a time as this, not arrogantly, but, yep. you know, that gave me strength and that's feeding your spirit, man. And so I like it even now. I can do all things through Christ. Do you, is that one of the more underrated practices of, of our faith? Um, the inner dialogue, you call it speaking life to ourselves? I think it is because some people, I grew up with that. Maybe you did too. I grew up with a lot of that, but some people don't have it and their inner dialogue is negative. You know what? Nothing good's going to happen to me. And this virus is probably going to get me laid off. And just, and sometimes it's not even external. It's, I don't like myself. I'm not attractive. And look at my, you know, this and that. And, you know, if, man, if you're against yourself, you're not going to reach your destiny. I should say it more positive. Be for yourself. You've got enough people already against you change that inner dialogue. And I think, Judah, some of it may have started back when we were a child and we just didn't know any better. But, you know, little by little, you can change it to I am blessed. I am prosperous. I am talented. I am creative. I am disciplined. I am equipped. I, I am a masterpiece. I am one of a kind. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Just, you Come know, on. just what God says about you. And it's so much better than you know what, I'm never going to get any good breaks. And I'm so undisciplined. I can't lose weight. And I can't. I did. You know, there's a thousand things that can be playing in our minds. Negative. Right. I mean, it, it, it's that it, my dad used to say, probably got it from your dad. What's the alternative? You know, what's the alternative? Know. To just be negative. I and, and I understand that most of us, we get, we get habit patterns just like me. And, but boy, I, every day I make it a practice with me and my buddies. We, we just, we'll call each other. I, I got one friend, we call each other once a day. Uh, usually on FaceTime, and we almost always start the conversation with, we're so blessed. We're just yeah. so blessed. And we start naming the ways we're blessed. 
I love yeah. my wife. I love my kids. Boy, I love them. I love the sky today, the blue and the and the clouds and the tree. And we just start going through a list that just comes to us naturally. And by the end of that combo, it can be five minutes or fifty minutes. Um, I just feel built up. I feel encouraged and ready. Yeah. That is so powerful. What a what a great thing to do. And even if you don't call somebody, even if you just do it, get up in the morning, Lord, I I look up my office sometimes. I think, Lord, thank you for the trees. Thank you for the green grass. Thank you for the air to breathe. Just these simple things in life. And man, this this virus has kind of taught us that, hey, what's really important, you know? Everything can yeah. get, you know, our finances, the world can get shut down. But man, you have your health. You have somebody to love. You have your faith. And I just think, you know, life is so much about perspective. And, and when you have that perspective that this day is a gift and I'm going to look at what I have and what I don't have. And really, what's, what's crazy, Judah, is almost almost everyone listening today, every one of us, by some standard, we're rich. We're the ones in the world that can have a cell phone. You know, we're not living in a third world country where, you know, they're fighting wars and all this stuff. And I think, man, just being in America, you have so much to be grateful for. And I know people can watch this from everywhere, but I just think that there's there's so much we had to be grateful for and it's easy to just kind of let it flow, but let it slide. Not that we're ungrateful people, but you know, I, I don't know if I thank God that my arms work today or that I could ride my bike, but you know, I should, I like that. Lord, thank you for my health. I have said that that's this morning though. Oh, I love that. Now, is it true? I, we're coming to a close. I promise pastor true or false. This is, this is my last question, but it has two parts because I'm a preacher. <laughs> 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 Number one, True or false that you eat chocolate cake every night? And then if you could tell your 20-year-old self one thing, what would it be? Yeah. Yeah, I eat chocolate cake almost every night. And I don't know why. I don't, I don't eat a lot, though. My, my wife, Victoria, kills, kids me because I'll you know, have a big piece and I'll eat like three bites. But I just like something sweet. I love chocolate. So, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> awesome. that is true. I love that. And uh I think what I would tell my 20 year old self is don't, don't, don't worry. I mean, that's, that sounds too trite. Maybe, maybe a better way to put it is trust God more. And we say we are, but you know, Judah going to get the compact center, you know, three years of legal battle. There was a lot of nights I didn't sleep <laughs> because I think God, I've already told the congregation, what if we don't win the legal battle? I'm going to look like a fool. I'm going to have to give the money back. But you know what? As you, as you get a history with God, you realize, God, you've never failed me. You closed a door that I wanted open. Then I look back and it should have, it, it was the best thing that it closed. And I was so disappointed. So now, and then, it, you know, when I first started, took over my dad, we had these critics and I'd get up each morning. I think, I don't know why these people are against me. Maybe they're going to stop me. And then, you know, I'd worry about some of that and what's going to happen. And then, you know, about 10 years down the road of doing this, I realized, God, you're in control. None of this can stop me. And I just, I quit worrying. I, I don't know that I worry, but it's a concern. But I just think, God, you know, if you shut a door, God, I'm glad you shut it. I'm not going to worry about it, even if I wanted it open. And God, I know that person can't stop me. Or I know this virus can't stop us. Or God, you know, we had a hit. It's, you know, you know, just different things happen. I would just tell myself, Joel, God has not brought you this far to leave you. Trust him. I believe, Judah, as long as we're honoring him, it doesn't mean we're not going to have disappointments and things we don't understand, but God's working it all for his good. And there's that scripture in Psalms, I think it says, everything serves his plan. And I used to think, God, everything good serves your plan. But sometimes look at Joseph. Sometimes God's got to take you this way backwards, maybe to get you in position over here. So I just said, God, I'm going to keep doing my best. And I believe you'll get me to where I'm supposed to be. And I'm just going to live from that place of trust like you've already written every day of my life in your book. So it would be, Joel, don't, don't worry. Don't live up tight. Don't fight everything. Just trust. Come on. And I believe that the just shall live by faith. Yeah. I'm trusted in I like him. That. He's a good father. He has good plans. Pastor Joel, you have for our generation you have opened up a portal in terms of what we can believe for, the, the vastness, the bigness, the massive uh, uh, grandeur of God to do. And so that compact center has changed our generation. It's opened up our eyes to see how big um, and how powerful God is. And I want to thank you for that. And in the midst of it all, Lakewood is the smallest, largest church I've ever experienced. Yeah. It is full of love and care and concern for each and every individual. 
and yet it's a church that has reached millions of people all over the world. So I love you. I admire you. I respect you. Thank you so much for being my friend. Thank you for carrying the gospel and the love of Jesus with such uh, beauty and brokenness and humility. I, I really, really love you. And, and this time means the world. It really does. Uh, thanks, Judo. You, you taught me something. This is the first one I've done, so I appreciate it. You know, you know how much we love you, Judo. We'll have you back at Lakewood whenever everything gets going again. But uh, I can't we wait. love you. Come join me on my radio later. We love okay, to have you. Okay, deal. Deal. I'm going to do uh, it. Good seeing you, Judo. I appreciate right. you. Love you, Pastor. Thank God bless you. you. Bye-bye. Right. Oh, the one and only Pastor Joel Osteen. As we close and conclude, can I just say, um, Pastor Joel said it. He might be one of the most criticized preachers um, in our generation. And all you got to do is meet the man and uh, your heart and your mind would be changed. Um, and boy, let that be a lesson to all of us. When you know somebody, when you really know somebody, um, boy, it changes everything. And Pastor Joel, thank you for being a family friend. Love you for who you are. I'm so, so grateful for you and the incredible role you play in the landscape of God's church. I love you guys. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hop off. Uh, hold, hold the phone. And I'm going to jump on a serious radio with Pastor Joel. So uh, I'm really excited. I want to come back, though, and go live with people. We're going to do some sword drills. We're going to do some giveaways, just fun stuff. Um, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching Hold the Phone with me and my friends. Hold, hold the phone. I'm going to get a new theme song, too. Okay, I'm going to record uh, some radio with Pastor Joel. And, uh, hey, let us know if you got an idea for Hold the Phone. Um, that would be amazing. I love you all. Thanks for watching. We will talk soon. Oh.